This is Dark Side, this is Get Dark TV. We're going to catch up with Casper at the Adidas All In Party. Casper, how did you get involved in this campaign with Adidas? Can you tell us? Um, kind of been doing bits and pieces back and forth like with Adidas. Just really small things. They've been sending me some stuff and just been working with them like here and there and kind of the opportunity come around to do this campaign all in that they said there was, you know, ways to do a real big thing about it and uh, just sort of invited me on on board and said that you up for it, this is what we want to do, I want to get you and a bunch of other artists and for me it just sounded like I was like, yeah, I'm up for it, you know, it sounds great. So I just joined up with them like officially now, before it was kind of unofficial, but now it's official, so yeah, just got involved and it's, it's been good. Enjoy it so far. Good stuff, and obviously uh, out on the streets there's billboards everywhere with the Adidas campaign everywhere, your yeah. face is on it as well. How many have you driven past? Do you know what, one. If one in Fulham, I've seen one, and uh, but I, this week's been funny because every day I've been getting a text from everyone random saying, blimey, you're on a bus stop, or blimey, you're like in a shopping centre, or, and all the JD stores have got them in now as well. Yeah. All the shops for the UK, so that's funny. So I'm getting a lot of texts and tweets and whatnot. So it's, it's weird when you see it, you're kind of like, it, yeah, that's when it really sort of hits you and it's going, right, well, this is actually a big campaign. You know, because when you just get involved in it, doing it, and it's only when you see the finished products that you can actually step back and back. Yeah. So, if you're obviously going to be um, maybe requested or required to wear some of their clothing, yeah. can you squeeze into a medium? Just about. <laughs> And obviously they, they've done an event before tonight, which we'll talk about in a minute, down at Village Underground. Yes, sir, yeah. And then there's a competition running, somebody could win to take the controls. Yep. And also see it from your aspect of behind the decks. Mm -hmm. How easy is it to, to find your winner on that? It was really tough. Well, first of all, I was in America on tour, and um, I had a deadline. I really went out to pick someone. And I, I, I kind of really could have left it up to someone else to go, who would you think sounds good, pick it. But I really didn't want to. I really wanted to get in there, read every single one. And I kind of, when I got back, I literally had two hours really to do it. And I had it all in my living room floor, laid out in piles, yes, maybe, no. And just went through it, through it, through it. And one always stood out to me, this one guy, and I kind of kept him in a separate pile. I don't know what it was, it just sounded really genuine. And he, I could feel like a, a real passion from him. So I left it on, on like the side, went through it, and it was still there, like through the whole pile. And I was like, this is definitely the one. Yeah. But it was it was it was tough because there was a lot of people there that like you could feel a lot of energy and passion from just by reading their little thing. Yeah. Uh, they wrote up. But then there's a lot of people just like, yeah, pick me. And it's like, nah. <laughs> you haven't really explained why. But this guy went in details and he's a he's a fan of the music. Yeah. And he, you know, I felt uh, to be honest, I felt a little bit of me and him when I was trying to break through. And I think that's what really stood out. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, when you gave the controls to him to take over the decks, yeah. was he under was he under nerves? Well, when I met him earlier on during the night, he was shaking, which was uh, which was funny. And I said, "No, just chill out. It's fine. Look, you know, just pretend you're DJ in your room, which is easier said than done." Yeah. But um, to be honest, he was he was a good DJ, and he had a really good selection of tunes. And he actually played me a few tunes that were actually I was like. If you finish this, I might play this out myself. So he, he, he was good that he was a half decent DJ, it always helps, you know. But he was good, and once he got into it and relaxed a bit, he was rolling, and he, it looked quite natural up there, so it was good. And then obviously tonight, the Scala, uh, you're about to go on shortly. Yeah, in um, about an hour. You've, you've, you're on at 12.30, um, examples played, uh, I've also had Plan B, obviously he's about to go on now. Yep. Looking forward to your set? I am, yeah, it's gonna be hard going on after example on Plan B. Just not because it's, I mean, first of all, they're, they're big you know, big guys, but the switch up of music. I'm the only really electronic dance act that's playing, yeah. and um, I'm, playing my, I'm playing my sound. So hopefully people stick around and get involved. I'm sure they will. Uh, if they don't, then uh, I might have to just try and crowd surf for two people to <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine, like, you know what I mean? Like, Adidas have put a lot into it, so I'm sure there's going to be people there with dubstep heads and going for it. But it's, it's always interesting playing in like an eclectic lineup um, with different sounds because you can, in one way it's, it's difficult, but in another way it's good because you're breaking your sound to new people, yeah. you know what I mean? Which I like. And the artists that Adidas have chosen obviously have all got their own selected paths. Yeah, 
but that's something you must be familiar with playing at the festivals that you've been playing at yeah, yeah, you're yeah. not playing at dubstep festivals you're playing at huge festivals anything lined up for this summer you can tell us yeah there's a lot really going on um i've got a, the usa at the moment is blowing up big time i've got a big tour out there uh, the hard tour i'm doing yeah. which i'm doing with a bunch of guys i don't know if it's announced yet so i better not say the names but tour bus we're through the country we've got like i think 18 gigs in 22 days or something crazy so that should be fun uh, other than that i've got like uh, Door Festival, Tomorrowland, um, Glastonbury, Global Gathering, uh, I've just done Coachella. There's a, the festivals now are really like starting to pick up and it's... A lot of the places I play lately, uh, believe it or not, are not really dubstep stages. They're kind of me with a bunch of other different artists, like House DJ, Electro DJ, which I'm loving. Because it's like, you're the only guys playing dubstep, so you're there to really represent the sound full on to an extent. and it's. It's good, but I do love doing the dubstep night still. But it's good to sort of break out and play to different crowds and push the sound forward, that's what it's all about. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot going on as far as festivals, man. That's good, and obviously recently, uh, album launch party, somebody called MLK. Yeah, MLK, yeah. Fabric. Yeah. I've had loads about that night, I couldn't come down myself, but... Don't worry, Lee, I'll, I'll forgive you. Another epic one. <laughs> yeah, it was good. And going back to the album, can you tell us, this is on the spot, yeah. a favourite track on the MLK album? Um, yeah, favourite track would have to be um, Fabrication. It, it was the tr it actually he actually named it after Fabric, <laughs> Fabric Fabrication. You know what I mean? And and it's one of those tracks that for me, as soon as I heard it, it was just like a super standout track. When I like when I look at you, um, and it's it's it, I start with it every time in my set. It's a big tune, and I love it. It's just it's got everything about it. I love it in a dubstep tune right now. Yeah. You know, it's emotional, it's deep, it's heavy. Yeah, it's a big tune. It's my favourite tune in the album. And we caught up a little while ago with D1. Yep. And he's obviously talking about a flood of emotions, Gen yep. G, and he let slip off camera something like the My Style CD. Yep. Next one's going to be yep. something to do with him. Can you tell us anything? Yeah, sure. Yeah, the My Style CD's kind of set up like a series that I wanted to do for a while. Just not really like a big compilation, but just give like the artist a chance to sort of do a mix, like an hour mix of their style and how they perceive their dubstep sound. So I've done the first one, which makes sense, on Dub Police. So Dwayne's doing the second one, uh, D1's doing the second one, which is his house is quite house, uh, he sounds quite housey and electro -y and so it'd be completely different to my one. And I kind of want to do that for the series. So that should be coming out, I think, just after the summer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Grab that. Yep. And then something you let slip on, I think it's your Twitter or your Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. K the KTB remix just been finished. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us anything on that? Yeah, well, I've just heard actually on the way over today that they've they've okayed it, so I can mention it. But um, Yes, for our next single, Easy Please Me, which I'm not sure when it's coming out, but uh, I'm going to play it tonight. But it's, uh, I'm happy with it. It's a bit of a terror. Yeah. <laughs> Look forward to hearing that. Yeah. So, uh, so we're going to head off to the Scala now, catch Casper at 12:30 for the Adidas. Yep. After party, that's probably where. Exactly. Call it. It's uh, walk us all round because we keep it healthy. <laughs>